to actually see the Bane a lot. So Dax, it's already something new here from Falcon Esports. A Benny on the Bruno, though, that's a signature pick. That's what he used uh, in the M M Myanmar qualifiers, actually, to get through and to beat Mythic Seal. So I'm already expecting Benny to do wonders. Yeah, and that's Bruno. honestly the place that for Falcon Esports, right? They usually really want to funnel everything onto Benny. And this is a Bruno, so it's all the more reason for you to want to do that. But I'm really uh, curious as to how Renegade will make use of this Gunabir. Like, what would be the ideal targeting? How particular could they be with the usage of this Gunabir? Beer. Is it really a, a pickoff centric approach that they want to use? Oh, that's a blade surge. It connects onto Kidex. The spatial migration. That's a flicker from Yue. Unfortunately, unable to get the stun, but the damage is enough. Renegade picks up first blood for Aurora. Oh, that's some early game presence Aurora MLBB is trying to show us here. Not even Ooh. bothered by the presence of a Jushin trying to control the mid lane. Even the Hilda. I do feel that. Aurora MLBB is threatened by the presence of these early game heroes from Falcon Esports just yet. They're working really well together, and we're seeing a four-man rotation as early as less than two minutes into this game. Yeah. Uh, Aurora doing Aurora things, you know? This is how they like to play the game. Mm. Actually going to be sent down below to soak in the wave, I believe. Mm. All right, that's an interesting one. Edward already level four, throwing out the mid lane together with you as Royal Milk tries to poke him down, but I agree with you. It's not that much pressure that Hilda can assert right now, but Dax is on the turtle. Yep. No responses yet. They Even Kite can be pressured down by Royal Mill. Oh! The Wilderness power the Wilderness as well as the Deadly Catch finds him. Dax has fed him into the Sharks and the turtle will go to him. Spatial Migration with the Violet Requiem. Renegade gonna be caught now. Juicin picking him up. Renegade low, taken out again. Dax still surviving as Kinex zones you away. That's the peel from the Crimson Beacon. That's another Lantern Flare and Edward is down. Falcon Esports starts off strong. And I'm not entirely sure if it was the best decision to proceed with that turtle contest, knowing that Demon Kite was poked really low. We were talking about how Royal Milk and his presence wasn't really felt in the first few minutes of the game, but he just made a statement with how he was able to poke Demon Kite really low. And PX7 was ready to do the follow up. He dealed enough damage as well. And Aurora and MLBB were unsuccessful in taking that turtle. Now it gets eerie. Now it gets real eerie, Brigida. We've been saying, you know, there's been a lot of upsets, but I it know, should I know. change. You know, Aurora, we've been hearing the rumors. It's sounds like they're a different team, but so far, you know, the early game has gone to Falcon yep. Esports. And man, that was impressive stuff. They yes. literally just played it so well. Dax forced him into that pit, got into the deadly catch. Demon Kite goes in for the stun. The damage, Bridget Glacier, the combo. Demon wow. Kite shoots the arrow down, and PX7 gets caught in the mid lane. All right. So gradually, they're taking steps towards regaining control of this game. Red Jade, though, forces out the Purify from Benny. So now they're rotating towards the top lane. And honestly, I really agree with what you previously mentioned. It's, if it's Aurora MLBB, you know that they're a team who really comes into every single game prepared. And I think that's the difference for day number one. For day number one, at least, you know who you're going up against. Because you can't say the same for the next coming days here in the Swiss stage. Like, at least for today, they know that Falcon Esports, they are a team who really wants to rely on team fights. And maybe that's why they prepare oh. this much damage. Great combo, amazing Ooh. combo. Finding the kill onto Dax. He's taken down now. There's nothing Falcon Esports can do right now. Mm -hmm. There's been great layering from Aurora MLBB. Oh. Whoa! Spatial migration from Renegade. And it's instantly comboed with the Frigid Glacier. Now Royal Milk trying to run away, gets stunned up again. The glorious pathway to get him out. The two tanky members of Falcon Esports will be able to escape, actually going back into the fight. But it's not enough to even get Edward low. You know, I honestly forgot that there was a thing. There was a spatial migration flicker combo that existed. And Red J reminded us of that. He's actually been playing a really great early game in terms of applying the pressure against Falcon Esports and finding the targets, if not even finding the uh, full pickoffs, forcing out some really important resources such as the Purify from Benny. So in as much as we wanted to see Falcon Esports really funnel everything into their gold laner, that doesn't seem to be the case right now. They're yet to get any conversions or anything out of the first few rotations. Sky Piercer now already for PX7. That's the first item, Sky Piercer. For the Jushin? Yeah, usually we see it as a second item, first item. Oh, Renna J. Oh, wait. Yeah. Migration forward. Very close to the Lantern Flare. The Crimson Beacon forward on a Purify 2 as Edward peels for him. Renna J gets out. The Glorious Pathway was already baited down, and Falcon Esports won't be able to get a kill despite using two battle spells there. Yep. 
So there are some attempts still from Aurora MLBV to try and look for the plays. But at this point, probably they really want to go for the macro overall, the PX7. Yeah, really but, good poke. Okay. All right. They want to go for the turrets at this point. But how could you do that? Look at where Royal Milk is, actually. He, he already cleared out the... Uh, ways from the topmost portion of Aurora MLBB and he also finds Demon Kai in the mid lane. So we're seeing some really interesting rotations here from both Falcon Esports and Aurora MLBB. Yep. Good damage, Renege. The bush not gonna go for the spatial migration, knows that Aurora, the rest of them, wants to just recall. And now, becomes a game of chess, really. How do you set up for the next neutral objective? It's all about setup here. Aurora have ways to, when they click, when they pull the trigger, it is an all-in, by the way, right? It's a combo that they need to commit to. So for Falcon Esports, it's all about how they can disengage from yeah. that combo, and if I'm, they can. Yeah, and I'm honestly wondering about where actually is the global presence just yet? Like, where's the macro control from uh, Aurora MLBB? Because Falcon no. Esports, they seem to be uh, looking for the ways to deal with that, but now that as soon as I bring it up, <laughs> Galmeng responds with a tier 1 turret into the hands of Aurora MLBB, but Demon Kaito, Royal Milk, here he goes again, yep. trying to pressure the jungler of Aurora MLBB. Well played to Falcon Esports, staying decisive, knowing that Domeng wants to go into the weak side to play for the push. Mm -hmm. Now he'll recall, he'll pull oh, some wait. of the resources there. Oh, that was great from Domeng, taking the spear, the structure, PX7, escaping away from the major migration as Royal Milk is tanking a whole lot of damage, but the French Glacier will lock him down with the AOG. Now, they oh. go back in. Benny is in the midst of it all. Pops in a purify. Now, kiting back as well. Demon Kite walking up and gets shut down. Benny is kiting away on the Bruno. And that's a double kill for him. Domeng making quick work on the turret in the mid lane. Will be able to get away. Now, Spear of Misery to disengage. The sustain was there for Benny. And honestly, the Soul Silver, the damage wasn't enough just yet. He wasn't really able to take out. Benny, even though he really went for the chase. So now Falcon Esports, they're also able to look for the turrets for themselves. Oh. And that's some insane damage from the Crap Gohana. I think it was also the exact same skill which took out one of the members of Aurora MLBB earlier in that previous clash. Oh, that was a massive owie for sure. On top of that, the gold crab as well over towards Dax. What does he have in his item build, man? It's a Warax and a Brute Force Breastplate. <laughs> it's not even like pure damage and he's doing that much. The Crab Claw Cannon, man. Something you have to yep. definitely respect. Yeah, you get to see the items here as well. Haas Claw's Berserker's Fury. So, already Power Spike building towards the Malefic Gun. Already has the Fury Hammer. So, okay. It's pretty, pretty, uh, pretty fast for uh, Mr. Benny. Honestly, I think when they uh, really go for the team fights, a lot of their skills really complement each other well. Like yeah. uh, the worldy, the amount of uh, defense that goes down for Aurora MLB during the team fights, even Royal Milk. Whenever he just goes in and looks for the targets and tries to go for some stats. So it might be a question for Aurora MLB, MLBB, especially if they're consistently unsuccessful in trying to take those uh, slow pickoffs or those one, those single targets from Falcon Esports for a moment because we're seeing Falcon Esports really take advantage of the team fight so far. Not unless Aurora MLBB are able to layer their skills really well because there were moments we've seen like really great layering. The Avatar of the Guardian and the Frigid Glacier, but Falcon Esports, they can just play around so much with their lineup. And now the Lord, who will get the Lord? Oh, it's Dothing with a Spear of Destruction all the way from top lane. Now Demon Kite running away. Benny getting the kill onto Edward. Renegade going to be stunned up as Domeng takes the tier two. How did he do that? How did he snipe it from downtown? Falcon though, they got a big win and the team fight is a three for zero. Only the Lord to Aurora. It really seems like my macro is the plan for Aurora MLBB Falcon Esports. They're going for the micro though. It's the complete opposite that we're seeing from their side. But Aurora MLBB, they're fortunate enough to get that Lord using the Spear of Destruction. What a well timed the Spear of Destruction. I mean, I couldn't even recall if they had enough vision or information regarding the Lord at the time or just or it was just randomly thrown out there by Domain. Let's check it out here in the instant replay. I think they had some sort of idea. Edward was close enough to that Lord. Oh Domain my goodness. Timed it so well. Both of the junglers went for the prediction, right? They they both of them just went in. So Demon Kite tapped it, Dax tapped it. They just it was a gamble at that point, and Domain won the gamble. The guy <laughs> with I mean that was a that was what are the odds on that, man? <laughs> Dominic shot it from so far, and the damage definitely doesn't, you know, compare to the retribution, yet he got it. Yep. This man, now with the Lord, it's only the first Lord, so Falcon should still be able to just 
defend this one. Uh -huh. Kadex can be taunted up. The combo mm -hmm. there as well. They're not going to commit fully onto that. The Holy Defense will be proc as well. Oh. And it will be Edward taken low. Great spatial migration on the BX7. The Spear of Destruction to the backline as BX7 goes in with the Crimson Beacon. And Royal Milk baits out the Frigid Glacier. No oh, wow. more fights. But PX7, he was so careful. He didn't use the Purify at that moment. Not until, or not while he knew that he had all of his teammates around him and that the other damage dealers from Aurora MLBB weren't as close. So Red J, he's been doing a great job in finding these targets, but then Falcon Esports, with this much pressure with their front lines, they're able to actually separate the members of Aurora MLBB really well. Like, they're trying to disrupt so much of their positioning which I don't even know if Aurora MLBB wants to take on the team fights at this point. They've been working for the macro for the first few minutes, but could it be time that we see them actually engage in a 5v5 team fight? I mean, Dominic is also here, but we're still 40 seconds away from the next Lord, and they seem really careful about the succeeding decisions that they're about to make. So now it's a battle of scale, right? It's a scaling battle. So if we take a look at the item builds again. The Melfi gun's done. How can esports have that power spike? And we we know we know the Bruno. Yep. Well, you know this has been pretty good, man. That Bruno. Uh, three hundred power spike though for Doming too. So should be all right from Doming. He should actually be the one uh, mm -hmm. for Aurora to actually. He's the X factor at this point, right? He's the main carry. Aurora. They need to utilize Doming, and Doming yep. really needs. To, to pop off here in the team fights, but also in the split pushes. Yeah, he also has the Wind of Nature ready, just in case Falcon Esports finds a way to deal with him. But they're setting up for this upcoming Lord. They know where the members of Falcon Esports are coming from, but they're gradually oh. making their way to the Lord pit. Who will be able to get this this time? Spatial Migration already used up earlier. Revival as well. SOD did not connect now. BX7 gets the kill in the back line. Kid X is zoning them away. Oh. Dax wins the Rectory battle. Benny's going crazy. Doming able to escape. Benny frozen. But that's just Benny ice cold on the Bruno. And Redward wasn't even able to cast the Zavador of the Guardian. Now it's Falcon Esports just making their way to Aurora MLBB and their base. They take down the mid lane inhibitor turret. And that's without the Lord. They still have the Lord. It's about to spawn. And Aurora MLBB, they have to defend. What? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Swiss stage of the M6 World Championships. I thought the upsets, they would end sometime. But Dax, Falcon Esports, Benny, they want to continue the train. They want to have a 1-0 bracket of full underdogs of the tournament. 4.3k gold lead, enhanced lord in the mid lane. They're going to go for it with the glorious pathway, the deadly catch as well. Aurora will have to respect this. Doming is pulling the lord over to the turret up top. But that will mean the base turret will be taken down below. And Aurora will be able to defend it. Mm -hmm. Honestly... I just, I just thought of it now, like the entire Bruno Bane connection that, or the Bruno Bane concept of the lineup of Falcon Esports here. They're just really so focused on taking the objectives with the right amount of micro. Even though Aurora MLBB were consistently making attempts to deal with it with the macro as well. How could you face against the Bruno and the Bane when they gain access to your important turrets, to your oh. objectives? And now they might just take out all of the inhibitors! Oh, is that Crap Claw Cannon? Royal Milk into the stun down! Doming very low, stay able to escape the spatial migration, gets in! Turret falling, Benny still surviving! Royal Milk dead, Edward walking up, Kinex will fall, PX7 with the Lantern Flare! Demon Kite able to escape, does he get picked up? And Dax gets him with a Crap Claw Cannon! PX7 grabs the Sky Piercer stack! Falcon Esports, they walk away with another good trade. That was another base turret to their name. All inhibitors down for Aurora MLBB. At least they were able to slightly surround Falcon Esports. It seems like they were really going for the end there. But now they prolong the game a little longer. Checking out the damage dealt ranking. Still, UL takes the lead. But in terms of impactful, like, one time, big time damage is oh. dealt. You have to really respect Dax and the amount of damage he's bringing out to the table right now. But that's all aside the fact that Benny also has completed his items. Dax is a Chad. He is a Giga Chad. Look, you see that item build, man? I thought War Axe, Brute Force, Tanky Build. No, tanky build. he no. goes War Axe, Brute Force, full damage. He doesn't care. And that's why the Crab Claw Cannon has been going through the front line. Yue, he started off that fight in the defense with a quarter of HP. The Crab Claw Cannon dealt that much. And now Falcon are just pressuring them, not letting them 
Bree Domeng is caught off. Oh, good dodge from Royal Milk there for oh. the SOD, but they won't be able to push forward anyways here. The Lord will be spawning in the bottom lane, and Falcon have three base turrets down, so they're going to have super minions pushing and shoving towards Aurora at every given moment. Yep. How will Aurora MLBB deal with all this pressure? Benny and Kiddix slowly are about to make their way to the Lord, and definitely Aurora would want to contest this. This doesn't look like a an ideal situation if you were Aurora MLBB. If they're left to defend with literally no inhibitor turrets left in your base. But how could they gain access towards the Lord? How will they engage this? Oh. There's oh. the back by a doming! Oh! Oh, the X7 gets the Sky Piercer! The Execute comes down! That might be the way for the end angle. Dex got the Lord earlier. Edward jumps in to peel for you, but BX7 gets another. And now it's Royal Milk who wants to push forward. Aurora, two members left standing. It's a smiling demon and Renate. Falcon Esports don't care. They want to go straight for it. It's another Sky Piercer stack for Renate. BX7 got the monster kill. And the day of upset continues. Falcon Esports! They were so well prepared for this. They stuck with their identity, but were still able to pull through up against Aurora MLBB. We thought of it to be one of the most challenging matchups we're witnessed today, but they prove us wrong. Time and time again, today we just keep being proved wrong by all of these teams. Throw out your predictions out the window, your expectations.